Uh, the, the ones who presented before, can you tell me which is best, PDF or PowerPoint? I uploaded the PowerPoint, but PDF sometimes is a smaller file, that's all. But if, but if you have an external link to the video, it's best that you use PowerPoint, I guess. If not, it's just uh, images. I think they are just work fine, both of them. Okay, I'm sorry. If it doesn't work, then we can. Oh, but it is also taking time. We didn't consider that. Maybe in the meantime. <laughs> Hello? Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so sorry for the de delay, actually. I thought that it's uh, at four, not at three, because apparently the Berlin changed it to, uh, to summertime. I'm trying to change my camera setup. Why the fuck this doesn't exist? Second day of presentations of the network nodes. Uh, we are present. Uh, we are listening, hearing, and watching the presentations of Khan Active from Casablanca, then Tah Project from Shiraz, Amber Platform from Istanbul, and Bishkek Contemporary from Bishkek. And now we are starting with yourself from Connective. Uh, Ekna, can you, can you please tell me how to, to share the screen? Because I can't find the... Uh, like you should, did only charge and presentation and... Just next, 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 next to the camera, camera sign when you are a presenter. Ah, okay. 
Yes, right. All right, perfect. I think now is good. Do you see, right? Perfect. Yes, yes, we see. Okay, I can uh, go ahead. Do you hear me well? Everything is going uh, okay. Perfect. So uh, yeah, my camera actually have trouble. So I think we will do just with uh, with the sound of presentation. Welcome everyone, and uh, sorry for the delay due to changes uh, in uh, in time, etc. So today I'm gonna present you the Conactif as a, as a creation node belonging to the Ember Network uh, Festival. We are really glad to be to be part of uh, the network after presenting our um, our series of talk and exhibition uh, showcased the the last week. We're now gonna present uh, more or less well, how how Connective was uh, was created. Uh, we are we're gonna give uh, context about before Connective, who we are, our DNA and values, and about uh, our uh, creation programs. Uh, our two cycles that we that we did and what changed more or less during the lockdown, what we added, etc. Something about the collaborations and uh, eventually our um, our team, our team members, who they are and uh, who are the people actually behind uh, the connective uh, dynamic. So first of all, uh, before connective, like there was a collective that. Um, that was created during my first um, first year of uh, master master degree in cultural and artistic engineering. Uh, there was uh, we were four people. There was uh, Yusuf uh, Yusuf Zawi, uh, myself uh, Yasser Benhar, and my one Yusufi. Like it all began in uh, during an art residency in uh, in La Ruche with uh, an NGO called uh, L'Atelier de l'Observatoire. Like we applied as a as a collective, our first project was named Rasarat Project, and it was uh, on the memory of um, on the memory of uh, of, a, of a of a place in Casablanca, because the the NGO work work uh, on the collective memory of of the city of Casablanca, and this art residency was within uh, this framework. So we tried to to collect and investigate. The different um, the different aspects of this uh, of this side of the city. So we made the four art installation, uh, mixed between sound uh, installation, uh, audiovisual, etc. So these pictures are the result of this art residency. Like there was a flash of l'archive. There was a lot of lot of picture portrayed as uh, an old uh, an old artifact. Uh, that's, that's some sort we find uh, here in the streets of Casablanca, mostly in the popular areas. Here there was uh, some, um, like it was some sort of memory card uh, that we uh, that we generally use, and it was stocked as um, as some sound sound memory of uh, of, uh, of the area itself. And uh, and um, this this piece was uh, was uh, some sort of illustration of the areas uh, of this place, uh, like the um, the doors of this place was portrayed uh, like like this, and we made we made it like some sort of um, some sort of play field of I don't know how to translate it. It's called the D. Like it was a game that we used actually to play when we were uh, when we were kids. And the whole idea was to portray the the way that this uh, area of the city was uh, was a playground for art for colonial architects, mostly for French architects, because they they were they were testing uh, different ways of building and different ways of uh, creating new city. So the, the the particularity of this side of the city called the Enshok was that from above you can see it as um, as uh, uh, like as a linear uh, architectural architectural uh, uh, site, but in the in the field ground when you are underground, you feel that it's it looks like an old medina. So we tried actually to portray it to to this artwork, and there was another uh, another audiovisual artwork uh, playing with the, the places that no longer existed in that area. 
So uh, this is more or less like the context in which Conactive arose, like before even the creation of Conactive as such, like there was the, this uh, artistic collective. Then later on, a lot of uh, members joined and others, uh, and others left. So the idea was growing more or less uh, uh, slowly, but, uh, but surely. Like we tried actually to create uh, some sort of, uh, of art lab, but the idea more or less uh, arose. So Connective now is a cultural platform that aims to create a space for sharing knowledge and know-how for the weaving of social link through arts and culture and to the development of creative and critical skills in the fields of visual arts, music, philosophy, sciences, agriculture, new media, and literary practices. These practices are perceived as tools of resistance against imposed realities, subtle tools of expression that promote social innovation, autonomy, and community resilience. After two years uh, or two or two years and a half, more or less, like we tried actually to identify what is the DNA of, uh, of Connective, because it was actually pretty hard to identify the DNA before doing any experimentation and working with the people, working with the artists and uh, working with the researcher, etc. So after this uh, two years and a half, we identified the, the, the DNA of, uh, of the Connective. And it's basically the symbiosis between art, technology and ecology, since this is the main framework and the main team that we investigate during uh, our cultural uh, productions and cultural programs. And we work through creation, education, and diffusion. The, the side of creation, we create through it like um, uh, our artists and different artists that we invite in our exhibitions, etc. Uh, education is mostly through the open laboratory that we, uh, that we make and participative workshop and the diffusion through our music concerts, exhibitions, tutorials, etc. So, so our, our philosophy, we always work with instead of working on. We highly promote collective intelligence and cooperation through our programs of roundtables, discussions, tutorials, exhibitions, creative laboratories, participative workshops, and music concerts uh, with uh, open mics. So um, in Connective, we believe in the power of the art to transmit values, transform societies, and give a voice to the voiceless. Since the creation of the collective, we have been doing cultural and artistic actions with citizens, artists, and researchers. Our main missions are to democratize access to artist artistic practices, promote cutting-edge artistic creation, and raise awareness about social, environmental, and political issues through art. So the collective mean values and principles are mainly solidarity, autonomy, interdependence, and, uh, and freedom. Like this is more or less the main value that we believe in as a collective and which are trying to promote uh, implicitly and explicitly through our various uh, programs because uh, we, we think that we as a collective are a reflection of the collective uh, or the society as, as a whole. So we are trying to embody these principles in order to, uh, to share them or to promote them on a larger, on a larger scale. So this is basically about the, the, the values and the DNA of, uh, of the collective. Now we are gonna more or less I'm gonna tell the story about the how it uh, which all began with the first uh, events etc. So the first cycle was on uh, art and society and how they are intertwined and how they are uh, connected and uh, correlated. Uh, what is the role of art and what is the role of the artist in society? Does it have to have uh, a role in the first place, like does the artist is supposed to to have uh, to make his art for social change, or or it, or it can be something else, like art for art or art for aesthetic or something else. So this first cycle of programs was composed of roundtable and discussion. Like our first event was held in November 20, 2018, and it was uh, an open discussion in uh, in a public space. Where, uh, where many people mostly interested by, uh, by, the, by art, by philosophy, by critical thinking, and eventually just like the general public or the general audience were part of this, uh, this discussion. And it was in collaboration with, uh, with a collective named Opium uh, Philosophy. Like it's, it's a club, uh, uh, it's a club in, uh, in, so in, uh, that is 
that belongs to um, to to a university named La Sorbonne in France that you probably know. So there was this young collective named Opium Philosophy that created um, uh, each uh, each semester a publication around philosophical themes that we tried actually to formulate the question and formulate the, the axis of intervention uh, with them. And this is uh, like the, there were three representative of, uh, of the collective here that we see in, the, in these pictures. Later on, we uh, there was another round table that we were, we invited uh, Muliam Larosi, which is a critic and philosopher uh, philosopher of aesthetic and generally like philosopher of art, uh, where we tried actually to, to understand uh, more about the history of uh, artistic, uh, of Moroccan uh, art history, like um, how it was developed. And uh, if we need uh, to create any art history proper to Moroccan uh, development, not actually going through uh, the, the usual uh, Western paradigms where we find generally like the classical, the modern, and the contemporary. So William Lawrence developed his own view on the Moroccan art scene, mostly through painting and uh, and photographies, etc. Later on, we uh, we made uh, also music concerts and uh, open mics. Like it has, it had more or less like double objective. Like at the same time, create an event where people can gather and connect with each other through artistic uh, creation. At the same time, giving uh, the general public uh, possibility actually to express themselves and uh, and uh, like if they have if they are practicing. Uh, rap or they are poets or they are uh, making uh, or lyrics or anything uh, like that they could have just um, signed and uh, and join uh, and join us so there was really, really like very emotional moments where actual parents came with their kids asking us if they can also play it was a very uh, enjoyable moment and at the same time since since from our first days we were uh, financially autonomous we tried actually to make some sort of uh, financial autonomy and it was mostly like through this music concert like there was some small fee that people actually needed to pay in order to join in so it so we can make it at the same time accessible to the general public and people who cannot necessarily afford to be in this part of this event and at the same time create some sort of uh, of um, of a budget that will allow us to to be still existent and create more events uh, in the future. So these are pictures from uh, from uh, the music concerts. Later on, after after doing the roundtables discussions and the uh, two days open laboratory of creation, production, and experimentation, and it was uh, mostly. Uh, many many participative workshops and open laboratories on do it do it yourself practices like how can we create food how can we recycle uh, plastic etc uh, music production uh, of uh, like there were other disciplines such as theater drawing coding graffiti vegan recipes and some discussions on uh, some life hacks and these are some uh, some picture about uh, about these events. So so through through these these two days, we literally tried actually to portray the, our future society. That's why actually there, there was some this uh, multidisciplined and, and trans uh, transdisciplinarity of, uh, of many uh, of many artistic practices uh, like combining food, combining the do-it-yourself practices, gardening, etc because uh, it's for us like it's very necessary actually to decloisonner, I don't know how to say it in English, like to uh, to go out from uh, from the borders that we that uh, that people actually have put when it comes to disciplines, when it comes to sciences, when it comes like the borders that we find ourselves in, like this the specialization of any art practice, like we try actually to mix this many art practice into into one place. So we can find many people who are interested in this different area to help them at the same time learn more about these practices and at the same time to connect with uh, with each other through these uh, art practices. So these are some pictures of this open laboratory. This was the open laboratory of um, of graffiti, 
and uh, and drawing like how can we can we draw uh, typography etc this was some uh, a discussion on colonialism and our amazigh roots and how, how they uh, and their how they are interrelated etc it was uh, made by a collective uh, named uh, named uh, tilila This was also an open uh, expression wall in collaboration uh, with Luzine, which is a cultural structure in the periphery of, uh, of Casablanca. This was uh, from um, this was from the open uh, the open uh, do-it-yourself laboratory, which was uh, based, consisted basically on how can we create a, a studio made uh, of uh, like for photography but with the uh, accessible tools not necessarily very expensive uh, expensive tools and uh, another thing that um, that i didn't mention that it was about the, the the public that we that we targeted more or less or that we intended to, to collaborate with was generally the from the periphery of casablanca that's why we generally collaborated with uh, peripheral uh, uh, structures like cultural structures, like it was at first Lusine and later on uh, it was uh, with uh, with a space named CD CD Moment because the whole point actually was to decentralize our uh, like the, the cultural production because the generally what, what we find here in Casablanca and probably on uh, on most of the like the, the the spaces all around the world was the cultural production is centered within a center, like it's generally it's either within the within the big cities, like we find, for example, within the big cities when it comes to the global scale of a nation. And generally within this city, we find that it is in this center of the city and not on the periphery. So we tried actually to go within the periphery of the city and uh, to promote uh, to promote our values and our artistic uh, and cultural productions. Later on, the second cycle between nine, uh, 2019 and 20 was uh, around the uh, arts and technology. And uh, as usual, like uh, the, our, our creation program consisted first on roundtables and projects and discussion, which consisted, uh, uh, which consisted on uh, creating an open discussions with citizens, with researchers, with artists uh, on uh, what is the relation and interrelation between technology and art, how they intersect, how um, how technology can serve art or the opposite. So at first we organized the first event in an open open public space, like it was a, it was a coffee named uh, Le Store, where uh, mostly it's it's full actually of very young uh, young people. So it was uh, that's why actually we we. we uh, we um, we should have chosen actually this uh, this space because uh, generally it's uh, it's full of Gen Z and Gen Y and uh, like our our generation and the previous generations. So we made the projections projections of um, of vulgarizing videos that explain the interrelation between art and technology, mostly in the in the modern time in 2021. Later on, we made a discussion with uh, an cultural operator and artist named Saeed Atifi, who is mostly VR and, uh, and 3D in his uh, art practice. And, um, and Salah Melouli, who is a cultural, uh, cultural uh, operator and artistic and art, uh, and art director of, uh, of a festival named Sbara Bara, which is mostly targeting um, uh, Graffiti, but he was also actually the founder of a collective named Open Takafa. Like this Open Takafa was um, trying actually to make knowledge accessible, but the project actually it was ephemeral, so it didn't uh, last much. So we don't have enough documentation on it, unfortunately. But the whole point actually was to to uh, to invite these two people who are actually one doing cultural production and the other who is an artist and to have actually their opinion on the intersection on technology and art to have uh, different the different views and the different uh, approaches to the same uh, actual team 
Later on, same day, we made music concerts with with local artists and local uh, DJ. So it has also the same purpose actually to make um, to make a small budget small budget in order actually to continue our activities and make our open uh, our annual open laboratory that we make each year. And at the same time, actually it connects people and connects people that are less likely actually to connect because the whole point of these various activities is uh, to, to open borders between the various activities because there are some people actually who are more interested in uh, the roundtable discussion and the intellectual side of what we do and others who are more uh, akin to uh, to the entertainment or to the musical side of what we do. So the idea actually is to mix this sort of people and uh, promote more hybridization of, uh, of society. Later on, we launched, uh, like it was, we were fortunate because it was in 2020 and it was in February, like literally one month or less before the general lockdown here in Morocco. So we were a bit lucky because it was our last physical event that we, that we held. Later on, like it was, um, and the target of, of, this, uh, of this open laboratory was, um, was seemingly like we were more focusing actually on the uh, on the inter interconnection between art and technology and the practices that are connected between both like such as gener generative art creative coding robotic and uh, sculpture and how can we mix it with interactive arts such as uh, Arduino etc graffiti gardening and music so this was after the first this picture is after the first uh, after the two days workshop of creative coding, like the participant we presenting their uh, their results of what uh, what they could could have been uh, doing after these two intensive uh, workshops. These are pictures of, of from the gardening uh, workshop where the the facilitator facilitator tried to to make from a recycled material uh, alternative way actually to um, to um, to water the, the earth. I don't know how to water the soil. I don't know actually how to express this in English because most of uh, most of this in my in my head is in French. So I'm really sorry for uh, the bad uh, bad English. These are from um, from the robotic uh, workshop where the where the facilitator try to introduce uh, people how can how can they create a simple robot using uh, simple uh, formulas uh, how can how can they how can this robot follow uh, some sim simple itinerary later on this workshop on the left was about sculpture uh, and at the same time uh, robotics like it was at first uh, the, the facilitator and artist Mustafa Biga was uh, creating some sort of interactive heart so he was they were trying actually to simulate a heart through sculpture and later on add, uh, add technological devices such as uh, Arduino in order to make it uh, beat literally beat so it's uh, it's a bit creepy <laughs> and at the same time uh, fun because mostly most of the um, participants here were uh, were kids from uh, the periphery of Casablanca from uh, CD movement Samely, this was from the workshop of creative coding. It was pretty amazing because they were kids, and according to artist slash facilitator Ines Belixir, who were facilitating this workshop, they were uh, very uh, attracted actually to to this like uh, to to creative coding, which is uh, which is uh, pretty odd because most of people actually think that uh, creative coding or coding in general cannot be uh, reserved to kids, while uh, we showed that uh, there is the opposite. This is uh, this uh, in the left was the result of um, of how can we create a do-it-yourself studio uh, from uh, from accessible resources? Like it was more or less like the continuity of the first workshop that uh, that we did the, the the year before. And on the right, it was an open uh, an open wall for expression. And later, the artist facilitator Mati. Zmuri, uh, with the help of uh, our uh, our designer and artist, uh, like who is among us in Connective Oman, so we tried actually to uh, 
like they, they make this graffiti wall of, uh, of connective uh, portraying our uh, our edition on, on uh, art and technology so uh, yeah after that during the lockdown like we had uh, as uh, as many of us uh, cultural uh, operator and artists we tried actually to adapt to uh, the virtualization of artistic production but we were more or less ready because we already uh, had the intention to go uh, virtually and to occupy also the virtual space not only the physical one so we launched a first uh, first first jet of a virtual concert and we didn't know actually what to expect so we just launched the, instead of making it physical because it was no longer possible we made a musical concert uh, virtually like we invited many many uh, artists uh, to make their DJ set or live act etc and people were present to comments. It was pretty weird for us because uh, like one of our main objective and mission is to connect people to art and culture. And actually people were commenting through this DJ set and live act. It was pretty intense, weird. Uh, we didn't know actually how to, how to handle this because at the same time it was, we were glad because it was working at the same time this wasn't the way actually we were picturing uh, musical concerts and uh, at the same time we launched uh, we launched uh, a new series of tutorials because we were intending to make a workshop at this uh, in this in this time but we tried actually to convert this format from workshop to tutorials so we launched uh, a new concept called active skills which is a series of uh, creative uh, tutorials through which we seek to bring artistic techniques closer to the general audience, making these techniques more reachable. Because we go through the principle that knowledge has to be accessible to everyone in a context where the Moroccan public system fails in its mission, like uh, short notice, the Moroccan educational system is very, uh, like, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is literally one of uh, the worst educational system in the world, which is pretty, uh, pretty weird because um, generally like um, we don't promote this kind of, um, of informations. And uh, generally like, um, like lately there was a lot of protests from teachers uh, here in Casablanca and Rabat, and it was received very badly from uh, from the police, etc., because they were beating them, etc. So it's pretty pretty intense uh, nowadays when it comes to to education and the educational system, because the government is trying slowly to to privatize this um, this educational uh, system by making contracts with the, the teacher instead of. Uh, of uh, making them employable uh, like for a whole per period so we decided to actually to change the system into more uh, private uh, private system so it's it's a way for, for the government actually to leave any responsibility when it comes to um, when it comes to this like when it comes to actual uh, uh, educational system and eventually even to the health system but this is another subject so uh, we come to some uh, contributes rather to make doses so it's it's basically that like the, the, the educational system contributes more to making the citizens to side like to archive pedagogy so we seek to join to join the fund to education and promote autonomy and self-training in different disciplines our language the moroccan derija because um, it all began actually from this realization that there isn't necessarily much tutorials on the internet. Like it's there, there are a lot of tutorials on many stuff on the internet, on English, in English, in French, or in various languages. But there, there, there isn't enough, or there isn't at all uh, tutorials in in Darija. So actually, people who are not English speaking, French speaking, etc., cannot uh, necessarily have or see this uh, uh, this uh, or reach this uh, these tutorials so that was actually the whole point of uh, of active skills 
is to make this uh, these tutorials or this uh, this knowledge actually accessible to the very general general audience beyond actually our physical limitation and beyond the, the periphery of the Blanca to reach eventually the whole Morocco and eventually why not uh, North African uh, countries too who are also uh, Deja speaking who can understand the Moroccan Deja. So about the the collaborations. Uh, we had a collaboration with a, with the, with a collective named Murky Murdoch, which is a collective uh, of artists, uh, generally sound, sonic artists, and uh, music productions. Like the, it was their first edition of the festival, named Chapter Zero. We collaborated uh, with this collective, and we made the Do It Yourself uh, workshops and uh, and graffiti workshops, like for the for the general public who were part uh, of the festival. And uh, about our general collaboration, we were uh, we made our first cycle that we shared that we showed above with uh, with the cultural structure named Luzine, which is in Aspa in the periphery of uh, of Casablanca. Later on, during the Silicon cycle, we made uh, our co uh, collaboration with Les Etoiles de Sidi Moment, which is also a cultural space that uh, give us gave us uh, their space in order to make our open laboratory. Uh, during the second cycle on art and technology, and with uh, with the, with the, in in the first chapter of tutorials with LFMD and the uh, Union Europea, like European Union, uh, and LFMD, which is the Forum de Modernité et de Democratie, which is uh, an NGO advocating progressive and democratic values uh, within the Moroccan society. Later on, we did it with USL Boulevard. During most of the our music concerts, they also uh, helped us in giving us access to their to their space uh, and uh, their various tools, so we can uh, make our music concert uh, as we wish. Like USL Boulevard, which is also an NGO and uh, making actually the oldest festival dedicated to the urban culture in Morocco. Like it, like it's it has like it was from the 1999 more or less, and it still exists till today. So it's uh, pretty uh, the oldest festival dedicated to urban culture here in Morocco. And with La Folle, which is um, uh, Fondation des Oeuvres Laïques, during our round table, they were also actually helping us in giving us uh, the space and, uh, and the various tools actually to make our activities uh, work. And finally, the people behind the connective collective and the connective dynamics are uh, are these people like there is Omar Kasimi, uh, who is uh, in charge of uh, photography and videography of most of our uh, events, like uh, general events, etc. There is Omar Bouzawi, who is behind uh, our logo and most of our uh, communication production and communication tools. He, he is also uh, an artist and an illustrator. There is uh, Mouad Miziati, who is, uh, who is uh, in charge, like who is a cultural operator uh, and uh, in charge of, uh, of partnership and uh, of collaboration and of funds. And there is Shayma Yaqoubi, who is um, illustrator and artist, and also in charge of uh, of most with Omar, most of our uh, cultural uh, communication tools and posters, flyers, etc. There is Yusuf Awi, who is uh, the co-founder and uh, and in charge of um, of the production like most of the production he's director of, uh, of the production of connective like of various events and various activities and there is myself who is creator artist and uh, in charge also of, uh, of partnerships and uh, fundraising with Mohamed Museti and there is Sofia Awrah who is uh, in charge of communication also cultural operator uh, helping uh, with writing projects and uh, various ideas, etc. So this is the main uh, people actually behind the the connective. Now uh, today, like I'm gonna close with this, uh, like what we are now and what we are doing, our vision, etc. So currently, 
we are um, uh, we are we just launched actually um, a project named Abiat of 3.0, which means literally nature 3.0, and the whole uh, this project actually is in partnership with the handball in uh, in Rabat. And the point of the project uh, the project of this project is to investigate the agricultural policies and the, how they impact us locally, how they impact the ecosystem, the difference between uh, food resilience and food sovereignty, and everything really related to the soil and, uh, and the relation between uh, the different um, traité, I don't know how to say this, but the various stuff that, we, that Morocco has signed with the ancient colonial uh, power and how, uh, how this is affecting us today. So there is, th there is this um, series of discussions uh, and theoretical uh, aspect of this of the project. And uh, then the next uh, or um, the next um, the second half of the project is uh, also oriented more manually, like how can we be more autonomous when it comes to food. So we will launch a series of tutorials and workshops where people will learn uh, how um, how they will make their own food at home, like vertically uh, within uh, within urban conditions, etc. And uh, yeah, I think this is it. And the next activity that we have, like the first activity after forever, like physical activity after forever, will be held um, in um, in Friday, like the twentieth twentieth uh, April. And it was, and it's, uh, it's about how the uh, international agricultural uh, policies impacting our ecosystem, and it will be held in Mohammedia around the city of Casablanca in order to go out from the center and decentralize our activity. So it's pretty exciting times uh, for us because it's uh, we can finally actually physically uh, gather with people, etc. Even if it's restricted due to the COVID-19, etc. But it's still uh, still amazing time. So I think uh, this is it. This is all. If you want to follow us, like we have a like we, we are present in Facebook and Instagram. Like we just need to write down connective. Our email is connective uh, at gmail.com. And yeah, I think this is it. Thank you a lot. I hope I didn't. Uh, it wasn't too long. And uh, if you have any questions. Any critics or anything, uh, just go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Um, if there is any question, please. Uh, I have a question for Yusuf. Hi, this is Amira. Um, Hi, Amirali, go ahead. I was wondering if you, uh, how do you deal with the um, language barrier and, or if there is uh, some attempts to do uh, by, I mean, how do you do it by bilingual or your target audience always like talking uh, and what do you mean? at the same time? What? I when mean, with language barriers, like with, we mean like actually physically when we make actual events uh, on the, uh, offline. Yes, I mean, it's going to be like, for example, if the content of the text or the things that is being discussed, the material is in another language and then therefore the audience is mixed. Or how do you manage that? Is it precondition of a language, pre, pre, pre uh, need to tell the people that, I mean, if this workshop is taking place in Arabic or in French or in English, or how you translate simultaneously. This is just some practical question because yeah. sometimes we need to uh, slow down to, to be able to make sure that everybody understands. Speaking of my own experience here, or sometimes, I mean, we were uh, trying to uh, call the workshops uh, to to improve the English of the participants first, and then to attend some other languages as well. Yeah, actually, actually, with like generally, we um, 
like sometimes actually for we have the audience who are not necessarily actually uh, speaking uh, Arabic or Darija etc or some of the speakers who are speaking French mostly or English so the general solution that we find is it, it's silly because we try actually to translate au fur and like um, which, which like I try for example with, if I am the presenter I try to actually to speak both languages so it's pretty hard to follow up always, like to try to speak in both languages and try to translate at the at the same at the same moment. Or lately, we were thinking actually about another solution, like for our upcoming event, which is, for example, using a projector and uh, actual professional that it needs actually funds in order to do this, like to finding actually um, a translator who is in real time there and using the projector in order to translate, uh, like you are translating, for example, a peace theater or something. Like this is one of the practical uh, aspects uh, that we are that we come up with more or less in order to, to translate in real time because it's pretty it's pretty hard actually to translate and uh, generally actually uh, within our uh, open laboratories we try to make them in the periphery and in the periphery most of the people are uh, Darija speaking like Arabic speaking like Moroccan Darija speaking so we don't have necessarily problem in that unless the speaker or the artist facilitator is not uh, English, like he's not our uh, Darija speaking. Here we find it as a problem, but generally, we uh, the most of the people actually we choose uh, to join our activities are uh, Darija speaking, so we don't have necessarily this problem. But during, for example, the round tables, uh, we have this problem because people are generally mixed uh, between uh, English speaking, French speaking, uh, and Darija speaking. And uh, the solution mostly actually for the discussions are this. But for example, when it comes to uh, to workshops or open laboratories, it's pretty hard because the whole point of open laboratories are uh, open. So uh, there isn't necessarily actually actual rigid solid structure. So we can't really follow. It, it can be just discussions between someone and his neighbor or his uh, like it's some sort of peer to peer discussion. So it's pretty hard actually to translate all of this. So yeah. So I think uh, this is it. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Thank very you for, for the presentation as well. Yeah. Thank you. So if there is uh, any question left. Or... Yusuf, I, I, I want to ask one question or two. Go ahead. OK. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the first one is it, it, it is incredibly wide. Uh, fields you are working on, I mean, from philosophy to our technology and uh, public art, everything. And uh, and you are reaching the second thing, you are reaching a wide community as, as far as I understood from the from the images. Reaching what? Wide community. Yes. I mean, people, you can access yes. to the people. Yes. Now, these, these uh, to, to relate to uh, related to my experience in our own experience, uh, the, the two questions. When you started, when you started, you were more, more in the um, you know classical art, as far as I understood. But later, the technology component uh, came, or, or or in the latest years, you are more technology oriented. If I'm not wrong, how this change happened? Because for for us, the, the opposite. Happened, it, it, actually. It, 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 it began, yeah, for you, I guess it began with technology and then it converted to thought, thinking, philosophy, right? Yeah, or other art practices. Okay. But as far as I understood, yours is from this general, yeah. but... Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, um, okay, I'm going to answer uh, for this first question and then uh, you can uh, mm -hmm. go with the next. So for us, actually, knowing that me and the co-founder Yusuf Ali come from a philosophical background, like we both have uh, actual bachelor degrees in philosophy. So we both came actually from uh, this thought thing, because before actually Connective, we were both part of, um, of, uh, of a collective named the L'Union des étudiants pour le changement du système éducatif, which can be translated uh, by uh, the Union of uh, Students of Educational System. And we had this activity that we were held in, in public spaces, which its name was like its name was philosophy in the street. 
and within this activity, which is philosophy in the street, the whole point actually was more or less such as connective, but it was most mostly uh, targeting the public space. Like, how can we make them uh, public heavens of uh, of public discussions around political, philosophical, ethical questions? So, I think one of the roots of connective actually came also from here. Like, uh, because the target was not necessarily at the time uh, necessarily art as art like art came later on like at first there was the critical thinking part and then later on uh, the interest was was rising more and more on the art because my, my I, I myself like was interested by visual art and by technology in general like it was one of uh, my main interests but I wasn't practicing necessarily professionally speaking, but I was practicing as uh, as an amateur. Like I was learning by myself because I couldn't afford actually to go to any to any art school because it was crazy for my parents to 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 study uh, to study art because it's sometimes uh, mostly here in uh, Morocco, it's more or less a privilege actually to study art because uh, it's pretty hard if you come from uh, from a popular area or from the middle class, etc to uh, go study art unless you have a backup uh, behind you. So I was mostly um, more interested by the, this uh, technological aspects and by these questions uh, around technology and uh, their danger, dangers, etc., etc. And I was mostly actually influenced by um, when during my studies of philosophy, I was mostly influenced by Heidegger and his uh, like critiques of technology as, uh, as the final stage of, uh, of the human civilization or the Western human civilization, like why the the whole itinerary of human civilization slash Western civilization came up to this technology, like came up, came up to this very question actually of technology being uh, the key point of progress and the key point of development, like as, as we see and we all know, like technology is almost ever present in every field possible. So I think f from there, I think I was more and more interested knowing actually I was uh, I was practicing uh, like technology. I was uh, dealing with technological devices like from from being a kid uh, interested. Actually, I was dissecting them, trying to understand how does it work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I was learning more and more about that. So later on, the idea actually like we had more or less like the ground or the condition actually to connect these both areas. How can we connect like the technology and the thinking? thinking aspect and also connected also eventually with the with the, with the ecology because the whole point of this collective how it was created it came more or less from uh, this activist uh, philosophical background mixed with art and technology so that's why actually uh, we 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 intend more or less to mix and to think more or less uh, transversally like to connect this, the various areas because we 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 think if we go into specialization, like if we like, it's, it's like you are closing the borders for for yourself and for the other members of the collective in order to blossom. So that's why actually we are trying to not uh, close ourselves in just one field or one discipline, which we are trying to mix as much as possible because this, we think that this is the natural way of doing stuff. Like if we see, for example, any natural field, we find actually many species, many, uh, many plants, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and they are coexisting with each other. We are trying actually to formulate connective in the same way, like many disciplines, many, uh, many uh, ways, many uh, uh, like artistic disciplines, connecting with each other and eventually creating an ecosystem of, uh, of disciplines mixing ecology, technology, philosophy or thoughts or critical thinking. We think that that's how it uh, arose. I hope I answered uh, your question. Yeah, yeah, it was very good explanation and inspiring, yes. And, uh, the, and the second question was actually uh, about the community. How do you access to, to the people? Are they so engaging or are they, I mean, very ready to um, participate in Casablanca. I don't know the conditions there, but uh, it looks that you you reach to to ordinary people. I mean, not artists or students necessarily, but uh, how what are the um, you know methods, ways yeah. of reaching the white uh, audience as well? Yeah. So uh, the, since the point actually, we're we're also actually targeting citizens like literally like 
along with their citizens, even though I don't like name name uh, name them this way, but like the yeah. general public or the general audience. The public, yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like the how to target like actually the general audience was um, like since we work actually with cultural structures operating on the field or offline, we we it was like generally a real collaboration with these cultural structures. So uh, they were actually trying to help us by by uh, making or working on uh, formulaire, I don't know, some forms more or less actually to subscribe because uh, since uh, they have a lot of visitors from from the neighborhoods etc cetera, etc cetera, we were trying actually to communicate offline in there and having some of some of us in there in collaboration with people from this structure so they can register uh, uh, offline, not necessarily online, because at first, at first we had this problem. We were mostly communication online, thinking that people that we want to target are mostly online. But we then thought that probably that people that we, we want to work with are actually people who are far away from uh, the field, from away from the artistic field, far away from the philosophical field. So that's why actually we we try to connect mostly on the on the field. So that, that's uh, the, I, I think that's what that's one of the methods that we are using is to go literally the uh, on the field and trying to talk with people, connect with people, trying to make them understand what we do, how we do it, and eventually uh, even actually uh, talking to parents, to kids, to literally anyone and everyone. So this is actually due to the to the whole dedication of the team, and at the same time to the collaborators who are also like uh, having faith or believing in what we do, so that they they were also doing their part by using their communication tools, who are generally also efficient and reaching uh, a greater audience, mostly actually on the neighborhoods because it's generally structures that are located on the periphery and working also mostly on the neighborhood so they have more uh, they had the right channel to speak with these people for example instead of using i don't know uh, facebook instagram uh, or other uh, digital tools they were also having numbers of people so this also also was helpful for us because it was closer we could actually call people tell them when when this uh, workshop is happening uh, and we could more or less follow up with them so this was actually the the way that we could reach people. So collaborating with the cult, with the structure that is operating on the field, and also going uh, going in the field and trying to communicate with people, gathering uh, their numbers to so have this proximity and creating this intimate uh, relationship with them, and making these people understand that this was made by them and for them, and not not necessarily some uh, foreign stuff uh, coming to whatever. Uh, to whatever means so i think these two two aspects are one of the the key points that we tried that we worked on in order actually to gather a community and i think that you, you probably know that with time actually the community grows and grows and grows and the actual people from these different areas become ambassadors of uh, of the platform like they begin to talk about connective what is it etc there, there is this event here there is this event there so it's more organic like it requires some that's why actually after two years of work that we defined the dna we wanted we didn't want to restrict ourselves from the beginning like from the thought but we experimented and try to reach the the people with whom we're gonna work and then define uh, exactly what we are what we do our dna our values etc so this was the the way that we did it yeah wonderful thank you thank you i don't know if there is uh, further or i think is there any other question i think this is this is it okay then Thank you for the presentation and also for the ex uh, explanations. Um, now, um, I think we can continue with Bach project, Mohsen and Milat. Yes, uh, do you hear me? Yes, we are hearing, hearing you. So, hello, everyone. I uh, hope everything goes well for you. Uh, I'm Milad. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to HTML and people who are working very hard in uh, AMBE Festival and also people who are working in OYUM platform. Uh, we had a vi virtual tour of 
the awareness space and it was really nice and amazing uh it's a great chance to meet all of you guys and uh, know about different cultures different countries and cities different ways of thinking and many other great things uh, i'm so happy to uh, be a part of this big event uh, so uh, to explaining the uh, DAF project and, uh, or Darul Hukuma project. It was, it, it just want, um, I, I just want to start with uh, this example. It could be maybe simple uh, compar comparison between people that are living in different location in the world. I want to talk about uh, using uh, electricity to have a lamp with light. In the beginning, it's something normal and simple. Uh, so uh, uh, we can imagine two different people that are living in Iran and uh, another one living in Germany. In the same situation, they are using the lamps and uh, then uh, you can imagine then suddenly the electricity is gone. And uh, they want to uh, use a candle to have some light. Probably 60% of Iranian people, when uh, they sit in front of a candle, uh, will have uh, these three words in their minds, uh, candle, flower, butterfly. In, in Farsi, we say sham ogolo parvane. Maybe uh, there is no relation between these uh, three words, but in Persian literature and also our culture, next to the candle, uh, I mean, uh, flower and butterfly are comes next to the candle. So in this same situation, I have no uh, honestly, I have no imagination about a person that uh, sits in uh, front of a candle who is living in Germany. So we have uh, some same, uh, maybe same tools, technologies, and maybe equipments. However, or different perspe perspective on these uh, things make us different from each other. So I think this little or maybe tiny point was the uh, point that I and Mohsen have started uh, the Darul Hukuma project in 2013. Uh, in the beginning, we did not have uh, the community in new media art, uh, but I mean, uh, when, when I, uh, talk about the community, I, I mean the audiences, uh, viewer, uh, artists, gallerists, and students to, to maybe uh, find some books, some uh, learn something about the new media. We, we, uh, I mean, in Shiraz, we didn't have any uh, activities related to new media and maybe uh, digital media in art. Uh, so um, what was the first uh, step? So we uh, decided to rent a space to have some activities. Uh, other galleries in Shiraz were working on uh, some classical forms of arts like painting. And uh, they didn't uh, honestly uh, trust to us. So we had to rent a gallery. Uh, we changed some structure of the gallery and uh, uh, buy some uh, equipment like video projection, uh, computers, uh, lip motions, Kinex, uh, virtual reality glasses. So because me and Mohsen want, uh, want to work with this um, stuff because we uh, want to uh, create some spaces for um, artistic uh, practices and uh, to and present some uh, maybe high level uh, artists and um, art activists and we invite some uh, art activists to help us to uh, 
curate some shows, workshops, talks. Uh, sometimes they send to us some digital books and magazines about new media art and digital media uh, because uh, we had an access to this uh, kind of stuff, uh, for example, Amazon or uh, some uh, online shops to, to order uh, the online books or magazines. Uh, and they send us some uh, articles, books, and some stuff like this. So um, uh, our first show uh, was uh, uh, bitrate in uh, bitrate uh, in in um, Shiraz artists from. It was the first uh, show of new media art in in Shiraz. It's uh, the exhibition in uh, the, the curated uh, by Morishin Allahiri and Mani Nilchiani. They help us to uh, make uh, make our community and to show uh, to present some uh, great artworks from uh, artists around the world. Um, in their curation process, uh, Morshin and Mani uh, have selected artists that each use uh, a variety of digital tools, material, and software in their works to present a, a specific um, category and technological aesthetic of new media art, uh, from um, art games, uh, creative coding, experimental 3D animations to glitch art and animated GIF. Uh, with help of these ways, we wanted to create an active community in uh, Shiraz uh, and also in uh, other cities of Iran. We had some experiences uh, in, in Yazd, uh, actually in Esfahan, in um, Tehran uh, with uh, Amir Ali and uh, sometimes with Dastan Gallery. In uh, GIF Bikes project, uh, I and Mohsen tried to start curating in art. It was uh, Daniel Roig's project, and uh, Daniel gave this um, chance to me and Mohsen to have some new ex experiences and curate some new GIFs from Iranian artists. Uh, it was the start point of our curating experiences. Uh, one, thing, one thing that I should add uh, to these uh, uh, talks, we were working, me and most of were working uh, as a graphic designer, so we design all of our things, such as uh, posters, motions, 3D motions and logo, website, and other designs. Uh, sometimes it goes to be hard because we should handle all the things uh, together. But uh, in, in the first step, when we start in Shiraz, we did it. We uh, All the time, we try to fix all things and um, to, to have some new uh, exhibitions to have some other things. So maybe Mohsen could help us uh, to uh, explain more about the that project. Mohsen? Uh, yeah, can, can you hear me? Yep. Am I okay? Yeah, hello, salam, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Milad, for describing this. Yeah, I'm also, I also want to say thanks to everyone here. We are really glad to be here, part of this uh, amazing festival. Let me, maybe I can also yeah. Yeah, we are also so glad that, and thanks Milad for uh, yeah, describing this uh, big uh, introduction about that project. Yeah, that project is a totally non-profit project. Yeah, totally. As Mila said, like we just start ourselves with with like our money, with our time. Just I mean, it was just because we we love to do this in our city. And then yeah, we are so glad that after a couple of years, we have 
some new connections. We already did some really good projects with, as Milar say, with Destan Gallery, with Amir Ali, New Media Society, and many other uh, activists in Iran. Uh, actually, maybe maybe we can also share uh, the website to talk about like the events. Yeah, I mean, how can I do this? Ah, okay. Oh, sorry, you are you are moderator now and and also presenter. Just next to the cam camera icon, there's a screen share. Uh, yeah, so now, yes, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the exhibitions and activities that we had, like, unfortunately, I mean, sometimes it, it's so weird. Germany, I don't know what happened to the server. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, or, or yeah, I prefer, I prepared some slides here. Maybe we can take a talk about these slides. I mean, yeah, I just, I, just briefly some of, I, some of the projects that we had uh, in Shiraz, like this is the like interactive installation that we did in one of the like most famous streets in the city called, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, famous streets in the city. It's like every year there is an urban event there. It's, uh, it's in Afifabar city and we did an interactive installation there. And yeah, as you see, like this is all the people that helped us into like, uh, yeah, facilitate and bring this installation. Like it was our friends and our community, the people that just love to do this, to bring something to the city. And yeah, we, we got some really nice, like uh, feedbacks from people. Maybe at the moment I just disabled my uh, camera here. Oh yeah. And then we, we also so glad that we had a TEDx. We invited for a, a talk in a TEDx that happened in Shiraz, Mola Sadra Street. And we, yeah, exactly. We described what, what happened to us, like mostly like the things that Mila said how we start and how this project brings us to the things that, I mean, we already did, like, and how, how we, like, get the trust of the galleries to, like, trust in digital, to put digital artworks in the gallery. And, yeah, this stuff, and it was such a nice experience also. And then we invited to curate a show for uh, Not Form for Digital Art Festival in Frankfurt in 2017. It was also really nice, like, it was also a really nice uh, experience for us. Like, we, uh, we invite some, uh, we invite around 17 artists from the city, like, from, from different, like, backgrounds in art, like, sculpture, painting, uh, yeah, drawing, uh, yeah, like, different kind of arts. And, we just invite them to our office to have a three month workshop together. And then we talk about uh, augmented reality to them. I mean, uh, we talk about how, how they, ex they can extend their uh, creativity or their artwork if they want to like put their artworks in, like, in a technology, something like augmented reality and how this, how this technology could help them to bring some new ideas to their artwork. It was really nice time. We had like weekly meetings with all these amazing artists and also friends in the city. And yeah, one by one, we developed the projects uh, together. And the final result was so fun and interesting. Uh, it was a, like AR project with different materials. Like for example, this is uh, something that our friend made. It's a kind of like a handicraft from a city of Iran, uh, German or buffed, uh, yeah, specifically. And also, yeah, she, she added this augmented reality data on it, and also it's print, and this one was an architect project uh, with augmented reality, and this one happened on a plate. Yeah, we saw many, and also it was a painting on a plate. 
uh, actually. And uh, yeah, we, we had very different like kind of like materials and ideas and artworks, let's say, but all of them was produced during these three months. Uh, and then we bring it to the, to the festival and we got really, really nice feedback. Like for example, this image, I don't know if you see my mouse or not, but anyway, left, I mean, right down image, it, it was a, like a stamp that one of the artists did and people can just put these stamps on, on their hand or I don't know, their body. And then they saw the, a story about like, a story that happened in Shiraz like hundreds of years ago. It was about like a piece that happened in Shiraz or anyway. And the story was appeared on their like on their hands by this augmented reality. And yeah, we, we had really nice feedbacks on this exhibition. And yeah, we had the talk also like uh, in the festival talk about like what's happening in Shiraz and digital art scene and what we did or yeah this stuff. And then uh, uh, we had uh, the first like embassy of uh, Durang Festival. Durang is a like Biennial, sorry Biennial. Durang is a Biennial for digital arts. That uh, we uh, we had uh, like uh, the first physical exhibition of this festival in Iran, and we, and we collaborate with Dastan Gallery. And yeah, we had many like also like to create a show for this uh, festival. This festival it was took place in two different formats. One was this physical exhibition and one was this uh, website. The website was also an AR website, kind of. And yeah, we, we just, we present some projects like this is the VR project from me and also like this project from Mila and also the, the AR project that we did that, and we curate and we had workshop for uh, in the like, in not from for this is our festival. And also we invited Mehdi Bahrami. Uh, he's also in the, in our exhibition in our upcoming exhibition in the like uh, for this festival, and as well many others like uh, I mean Hakpana who did this and also uh, yeah most of our community that we did these projects together are a part of our activities also during the Amber Festival and in our exhibition we will present some of their works. For example, this one is a game art project that Mehdi Bahrami did. It's like it's about like. Iranian and Islamic geometries. And he like did some really nice and interested creative codings and bring these, ge these geometries into game, to art game kind of. And yeah, it was a, like also like interactive installation. And yeah, it was a, like totally like digital art exhibition. And also we had Hatch Room. Uh, I mean, we did it with as a part of Tear Art, which happened like 